Hey guys, Code on Byte here, and I've just been cooking some wood because there, well, over in our little uh, infinite breeding cell, there's a, a couple villagers um, glitched out, and one of them wants to buy some coal. So I said, you know what? Heck, why not? So yeah, I will meet you guys over there momentarily. Yeah, so I think these, uh, some villagers either just glitched out, or, um, wow, chunk error. Or maybe they were just, uh, maybe when two villagers bred, the baby just, uh, spawned on the outside. But, yeah, let's see. Ah, oh, you wanted some wheat, so let's give them some wheat. And, let's see, yeah. Okay, cool. We got eight emeralds from him. And he's coming up with a new trade. So why do we want... So there's basically like two types of emeralds. Ah, you wanted the coal. Uh, I mean, uh, villagers. There are villagers who will uh, sell you emerald, emeralds in exchange for other more common goods. Oh yeah, and the villagers who ask for coal will also accept charcoal. Just like everything else that asks for coal in the game. Then there are villagers who will accept emeralds and give you something else in return. Oh, that's not it. Yeah, like that. See, this guy is going to give us a diamond shovel for just seven emeralds. So, for basically uh, seven emeralds worth of wheat and coal, we were able to obtain a diamond shovel without even mining any diamonds. So, yeah, pretty cool. Oh, this guy, see, he just gave us a better deal, so I'm going to go make some more coal. Villagers will like you more if you trade with them, and if you attack them, they'll like you less. So, uh, yeah. Now we have a diamond shovel, so that's going to be useful, because I think I'm going to need some more glass. So, uh, let's see what else. What does he want? Ah, not a good deal. Okay. I will see you guys in a bit. Okay, so this episode we're going to be moving the villagers into the Iron Golem farm. That's going to involve me digging a bunch of water canals underground uh, to a special location that I've selected that's right in the middle of, all, of where all the farms are going to be. We've already seen that. We've already seen uh, how you move vill villagers with water canals. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. Just thought you guys might appreciate it. Let me know if you're if you're disappointed about uh, missing that riveting and exciting action of me doing a whole bunch of digging underground. All right, you guys. All right, guys. So I was just digging out this underground canal, and I discovered another ravine. And I'm actually going to go explore it right now. Not because I need resources. I mean, I have enough. I have more than enough iron to uh, make the minecart rails and minecarts that I want to uh, speed up the process of putting the villagers in the farm. Uh, the reason I want to light this up is because later on, I'm going to be making um, a few different um, mob traps or, or mob farms. Trap is a bit of a mis misnomer. Um, and the way they work is that you eliminate as many areas where mobs can spawn around the uh, farm as possible. And that will force the game to spawn more mobs inside uh, your farm. And uh, caves like this are great places for mobs to spawn. So whenever I find a cave, I'm just going to go explore it and light it up. So that... Um, so that my future mob farms will work better. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. And let's see. I'm just gonna dig down. But not straight down. And uh, see what I can do about this creeper here. Okay, that's one way to kill it. Alrighty. Ooh. Yeah, I did leave my diamond shovel in a chest back up there. So yeah, for this, because this is a big ravine, I decided to uh, learn from my mistake 
and um, uh, go with sort of the uh, option two for uh, dealing with um, a dangerous situation, and that is assume that I'm going to die and make it so that it doesn't really matter if I do. So I don't have anything valuable. I do have 10 iron ingots and a mostly used up iron pickaxe and a bucket, but there's also another cave that I explored earlier. I have almost four stacks of uh, iron ore back home, way, way more than enough that, uh, to uh, make the minecart rails that I need, so I really don't have anything that I care about losing right now, so I'm just gonna go explore this cave. So yeah, if I die, if I don't die, great, but if I do, who cares, I got this cave lit up, that's all I care about. And once this golem farm gets going, so basically once I finish that canal, it's uh, not going to matter. Um, any iron that I lose is just not going to matter, because I'll have an iron golem farm. Oh, you stupid ass kiting me like that. Hi there, Mr. Zombie. What, go attack the skeleton, you idiot. He shot you. Alright. That's time for plan A. Let's pretend we have... Let's remember that we have superpowers and dig into the wall. And block them. I should probably get some blocks if I want to do it. <sighs> okay, so... We're doing both, uh, sort of, plan A, that's what I'm gonna call it. Plan A is to use your superpowers to not die, and plan B is use your superpowers to make it so it doesn't matter if you do. Alright. So, yeah, I think I'm either gonna speed this all up, or just go off camera and do it. So, uh, yeah. And... Yep, okay, plan B. So yeah, it died. Didn't matter at all. Didn't have anything valuable. All the materials that I need to uh, build that... Um, to uh, build the... Uh, continued building the canal system. Uh, all those materials are stowed in a chest. So yeah, don't really care that I died. Make another pickaxe. Oh yeah, and I was using some iron pickaxes. And hey, you know, since I know like exactly where all this uh, stuff is, I'm going to go see if maybe I can get my stuff back. Just for lols, not because I really need to or anything. Because, you know, oh yeah, food. Gotta get food. Carrots. Should probably cook some more potatoes just so I have a uh, higher saturation food for uh, when this kind of thing happens. So, uh, yeah. Oh, hi, Mr. Creeper. And let's make a boat. I did have that suit of armor, but again, by the end of this episode, that won't matter. And oh, look at that. We even get our stuff back this time. Oh, and by the way, um, if you move more than 128 meters away from a hostile mob, it will automatically despawn. So, we don't have to deal with the same mobs that we were dealing with before. So, just keep that in mind if you're ever in a scary situation, if there's ever like a, a whole bunch of mobs that you don't like, just run really far away and when you come back, 
there's a good chance that uh, those mobs won't be there anymore. So yeah. Don't mind at night. I know you're looking at that cave and you're feeling kind of brave. Go to bed, you'll be alright. Don't mind at night. There's nothing that is gonna change if you just wait until the day. Zombies wanna eat your brain. Don't mind at night. I know it's me you're gonna fake. Make a bed, it's not too late. Three wall and three wooden planks. Don't mind at night. How many times I have to say, drop the pick and walk away. Hey. Okay guys, so apparently the villagers out here that uh, glitched out I guess have been breeding and now there's a whole bunch of them. And I just want to show you guys something. See that right there? See that? If I give this guy 10 emeralds, he'll give me a diamond pickaxe. Yep, that's right. Now do you understand why I wasn't all that excited about the diamonds that I found over in the uh, tunnel? Yeah. So an emerald is, uh, you can, uh, there's some villagers, you can give them 20 wheat, and they'll give you an emerald. So, farm 200 wheat, get a diamond pickaxe. Hell yes. I think I have some emeralds back home. I'm gonna go get them, and see if I have anything else. Let's see what other trades these villagers have, so that I can... Alright, that guy wants a written book. That guy also wants a written book. Let's see if this guy... Oh, 19 wheat. Yep, okay, yep, we're getting a diamond pickaxe, guys. We're gonna go get- we're gonna get our first diamond pickaxe right now. Ah, uh, Stupid creeper. Well guys, I'm an idiot. For some reason I put the emeralds in with the mob drops, so... We actually have enough emeralds for two diamond pickaxes, and uh, we are going to exploit that deal. And we're also going to sleep during the daytime, because for some reason in Minecraft, you are allowed to sleep during the daytime when there's a thunderstorm going on. I think it's because the bed actually checks the uh, sky light level or something uh, to determine whether you can sleep. That's also why you see, why we saw all those mobs spawning, because during a thunderstorm, it the light level drops to 7, which is just low enough for um, hostile mobs to spawn. Oh god, so uh, yeah. Alright guys, ready to get our first uh, diamond pickaxe without mining any diamonds, and oh boy, it's starting to stutter. That, for, before I do anything, I have to... Uh, get up there and turn the breeding off because it's, it's it was starting to stutter so yeah all right guys calm down all right let's see I'll take two of these so yeah that's pretty cool I was gonna eventually I guess now I could mine obsidian and if I went back there I could get an enchantment table Oh, let's see what he's offering us now. Usually a bad trade, but if you were to set up a good pigman farm in the nether, could be good. So, yeah. Alright guys, so I just finished the underground water canal. Again. And this one leads from our breeding cell all the way over there to, uh, right here. And this is going to be the water elevator that lifts the villagers up into the golem farms. Now, the, so right now I'm going to uh, build the uh, loading platform for the first level of spawning cells. Uh, these first, uh, there's going to be, uh, as I've said, four uh, golem towers. As you can see, I've already sort of outlined uh, this one and started to outline this one here. Um, and there's going to, they're going to be in a square, and uh, there's going to be uh, three levels to each one. So this, in this spawning cell, the base plate is at y equals 90. Let's open up the F, F3 screen. And the uh, spawning cell is 7 blocks tall. 
So that means that we need to uh, bring the villagers up to level 97 to easily load them in with minecarts. Now luckily I do have, um, I have 9 pieces of gold so I will be able to make 6 uh, power rails. But if I was not able to make any power rails I'd want to go higher so that I could use a, a slope to accelerate the minecart and uh, bring the villagers to the farm. So uh, yeah, without further ado I'm going to extend this elevator upward. And then I'm going to show you a little uh, contraption that I uh, came up with. I designed it in a, uh, in a different world, a creative mode world that I use to design things. And it, it is going to really make putting the villagers into these farms much, much easier. So yeah. so much fun working together they get the job done built to the bird travis and spot playing together like good friends should Alright guys, so I finished that water elevator, and let me tell you, these water elevators are a big pain in the backside to build, because uh, I really wish that uh, Mojang would make water buckets stack. Well, maybe that'd be a bit broken. I don't know. So, yeah. Alright, and we're going to have to replace this with uh, a, uh, an opaque block because it, it, we're going to have minecart tracks running through there. All right. So the villagers are going to swim up here. And uh, now what we have to do is have them contained in an area so that we can easily uh, force them into minecarts and then send the minecarts uh, over to the spawning cell over there and drop them in the uh, chambers. So yeah. Well, we're going to start by extending the uh, water elevator, like so. Let's see. They're going to, this is going to, this block here is going to be where they uh, land. Should have brought a different type of block to uh, differentiate it from the others with, but whatever. Alright. Uh -huh. One, two, three. One, two, three. So yeah, the water stream is going to push them uh, through here. And then they're going to basically fall into a... We're going to have a, a little uh, holding cell thing right here just to hold them, uh, just to keep them still. It'll be one by one like this. I'll put ladders here, just so I can get up. Alright, so let's see. Ooh, you know what? Of course, we need to bring this uh, wall up here so that they can't just jump out. So yeah, and I don't want the water to flow down, so we'll have a sign right there. And then water right there. This will push them out. However, there's a problem. 
eventually, we're because these uh, golem farms are going to be uh, triple decker, decker, uh, dicker. <laughs> that sounds a little bit uh, sketchy. Um, we're going to want to extend this water elevator up. So in this water elevator, we are going to need to have a method for doing multiple floor selection. So uh, what we're going to do is take out this glass block here, put this in, and let's see, do I have a crafting table on me? No, I don't. So I shall make one. And I think I'm going to leave this one up here just to, just to make it easy. So yeah, um, we need to make another trap door, just like the uh, one that we uh, had in the uh, infinite breeding cell. However, this un unlike the last time where the hatch was simply a substitute for a sticky piston because we did not have any redstone yet, this time the trapdoor is actually what we need because we need it to be able to open and close but also act like a sign in that it will uh, prevent um, water from uh, flowing into it which is what we want because we'll have another water source block up here when we extend this and also it is really important that the hinge for the hatch be on this side because if the hinge were say on because the thing about uh, trap doors even when they're uh, open they still have a small hitbox like see this thing still has a bit of a hitbox um, and a villager could get stuck on it and they're too dumb to swim out of the way but because this water stream is flowing um, it will push them out of the way uh, so that they'll they won't get stuck because if one villager gets stuck in here the, you know when they're supposed to be swimming up and remember this thing is going to be extended uh, you know 70 blocks up and eventually 140 blocks up from here um, if one villager gets stuck uh, all of the villagers behind them will get stuck too and they'll drown and we don't want that so yeah Okay, so now we have a way of, of preventing the villagers from going up when we want them to come out here. However, we don't have yet have a way of preventing the villagers from coming out here when we want them to go up. So, what we're going to do is use a piston to uh, block this uh, too high opening here so that villagers will not be able to uh, enter unless we, uh, when we uh, want them to go up. And that will force them to go up. However, we still have to have this water stream uh, flowing because it needs to push the villagers away from the side of the hatch that is that has a hitbox, even when it's open. So it needs to be flowing away from the hinge. And so the way we do that is we'll put a, a piston right here. And that will uh, close the opening and keep the villagers from uh, coming out here in the future when we want to uh, transport them higher. So that, uh, so that we can put them in the upper cells for the golden farm. Right now, of course, we're going to have this hatch closed, and the villagers are going to be uh, dropped right here. They're going to be held. See, they, can, they won't be able to move. They'll all be on, one, on a one-block square, and we'll have minecart rails that go to this spawning cell here so that we can put them in. And I will, of course, be doing that for all of the uh, spawning cells that I'm going to have. And I just realized that I forgot to bring redstone and a slime ball so I cannot make a sticky piston. I will be right back. Bombs away! Ow. Okay, that totally ruined it. Alright, so I grabbed the pistons that we use to make the x-ray machine. However, um, sometimes a piston arm is not enough to uh, stop a villager. I mean, sometimes they glitch through it, so... We want to actually push a block, but we want it to be able to pull a block too. So we turned it into a sticky piston, which you do by putting a slime ball on it like that. Um, now, luckily, we live in a swamp, so we, as you have seen, have way more than enough slimes. Like, I already have like six stacks of slime balls just from killing slimes that, ha that get in our way or try to attack me. So, yeah. If you don't live in a swamp, uh, slimes do spawn below level 40 at any light level, but only in certain chunks called slime chunks. So if you're doing like a strip mine, you might find some down there. If you want to use, there's a pro, there are programs called slime chunk finders where you just tell them the, you just type in the seed for your world, um, and then it will uh, sh show you all of the uh, chunks where slimes can be found.
Or you could just go find a swamp biome where uh, between levels 51 and 69, uh, slimes can spawn whenever it's dark, just like other hostile mobs can. So, yeah. Alright, let's see, what do I want? Right. So, this water still has to be flowing, so that means that we have to block the uh, villagers and obstruct their movement with uh, the second block. And because they are two blocks tall, just like us, uh, it, we don't need to completely block the opening. Dang it. Alright, let's see. Uh, I hate to break glass, but whatever. Oh, god damn. Oh my god, I hate this. Oh, come back here. Well, that was annoying. Um... Okay, good, yeah. Um, uh, piston will always, um, uh, orient it. Now I have to break more glass. Just, just great. Um, will, uh, always be, uh, pointing towards, towards you when you place it, so. I mean, obviously, it's important that you're able to control where you place, a uh, piston. But, it can be just a tad annoying, um, for, you know, when you... It can just be an, it's kind of an annoying way of uh, having to uh, place them, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But I mean, I, I guess there isn't an alternative. It's just something annoying you have to deal with when working with pistons, okay? Uh, so, yeah. And this uh, column here with the ladder is completely in the way. So, I'm going to have to move that. Let's see. Yeah. And let's see, I'm, I am building away from these jack-o'-lanterns I was able to place. And in case I haven't mentioned it, which I'm pretty sure I have, uh, jack-o'-lanterns can only be placed when you have an opaque block um, under it. You don't have to... If you, you can remove the opaque block later, but you have to have it under it when you place it. Like, like if it won't let me place a jack-o'-lantern on the side of this block or this block because there's nothing under it. And so that makes it really annoying. Glowstone gives you lighting... Um, in block form without that requirement, but glowstone does not count uh, counts as a transparent block, so that means there are many limitations that it has, such as, you know, you can't place things like minecart rails on it. I believe you can place redstone on it. Alright, so this ladder here is completely in the way, because we need to uh, make some levers, and I do not have any cobblestone. Wow, yeah, I'm just failing. I'm just failing hard today. Alright, so I got two pieces of cobblestone, which is what I need. So, we need to make some levers so that we can control um, uh, these, uh, the piston and the uh, hatch. Uh, and we need the lever for the hatch because it's enclosed, so we can't right-click it. So, oh, I don't need the crafting table. You make a lever by taking a cobblestone, putting a stick over it like that. And the lever is kind of like the button. It produces a redstone charge, but unlike the button, which just makes a pulse, this one will stay. Like, it'll stay until I turn it off again. I don't think I've showed you guys levers. So, when we want, the vi so, uh, when we want to send the villagers uh, up further, we open the hatch and, uh, and uh, close this. Now they can't move out here, so they're forced to go up. And we will, of course, have uh, an extended water elevator above this. So, but right now, we want the villagers to uh, be on this level, to be dumped right here, so that we can use minecarts to transfer them. So we turn, flick the switch like that, close the hatch, and uh, open this gate here. And uh, yeah, so uh, no, I did not bring this stuff to make minecart rails, so let's go back to the uh, hole in the ground that I call my house, but that any real Minecraft player would uh, scoff at, and uh, make the minecarts and rails and whatnot. I love doing that. Alright, so I started cooking up some iron here. Let's see, did I, where did I put the rest of my iron? Oh yeah, okay, that should be good. So, let's see, I don't think we need any more glass right now. I'm just going to empty this out. Um, yeah, crafting table. Ah, oh, yes, it's right at the foot of my bed. Alright, and, uh, so first, first of all, I would like to have, uh, four mine carts because I'm going to be putting four villagers in each holding cell, and I don't want to have to make two trips for each of them. That'd be uh, eight trips per, um, 
per what do you call it per per spawning cell uh, which is ridiculous. I, I don't have time to do that. And then we need to make a whole bunch of minecart rails, probably like 128 or so. So let's see. I need some more sticks then. So yeah, I'm just going to turn the rest of this iron into minecart rails because uh, shortly all my iron problems are going to be solved uh, forever. So yeah, that should be good. Yeah, it's, that's a, it's probably enough minecart rails, I think. And I have four minecarts. However, there is something else. I mean, uh, just put just rails in minecarts. You can't move the minecarts. You, you need something to give them power. So for that, oh, it's still in the loot chest. We need the. I haven't smelted the gold yet. I will be right back while I wait for it to smelt. And I am really sorry that I am so uh, disorganized today. Okay, guys. Uh, sorry about that. I am just really disorganized. So now I have six pieces of gold, and you know what? That is all I need to make this whole putting the villagers in the golem farms thing a lot easier. So it's like making a rail, except it has redstone there. And you only get six instead of 16. And these are powered rails. And they're basically like um, uh, the regular rails, except that they, when a minecart moves over them, it will be sped up to uh, eight meters per second. Its speed will be uh, changed to that in whatever direction it's moving. So obviously they are going to be extremely helpful uh, to make putting the villagers in the minecarts uh, into the holding cells really easy. The alternative, of course, would be for us to push the minecarts. Or to use a powered minecart, but those are a pain in the butt. I mean, moving villagers is enough of a pain in the butt without powered minecarts just being obnoxious. And they're slow, and uh, yeah. And six is all we need. I... When I went caving in episode 7, after I died, I was exploring again, I found like 32 pieces of gold. And then I died again and lost that, but I was able to come out of the cave with 9 pieces of gold, so I'm perfectly happy. I'm not complaining. So yeah, let's see. Where was... Oh, there it is. I am being absent-minded today. Ah, I wish boats would accelerate faster, you know? Okay, let's see. I'll meet you at the top. All right, so uh, the rail is, of course, going to be going out uh, this way because we need to put the villagers in this holding cell, this uh, spawning cell right here. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll be, uh, of course, making the uh, bridge for the rails to move on. I'll be doing all that off camera so you guys don't have to watch it. But yeah, I'm going to put one power rail right here. And a power, and a power rail doesn't uh, automatically work. Like, see how the... Uh, the little, uh, how it's dark red, um, that's because it's unpowered. So like many redstone components, you have to power it. And the easiest way to do that is put a lever next to it, turn it on. There. Bam. Powered. And, uh, for various, uh, technical reasons, I'm going to, uh, replace this glass block with, uh, an opaque one. Because that way, if a minecart is, uh, is sitting against the, uh, Opa op the opaque block and it stopped and you turn the power rail on it'll be pushed away from it but if that were a transparent block it wouldn't and I'll go down and get the minecart later all right guys so I'm gonna go off camera and uh, set up the rail system and uh, yeah I'll meet you guys when that is done all right so I've just placed another power rail here um, what this power rail is for is so that I'm able to transport the last villager out there because if I didn't have this then it'd be difficult for me to get behind it to the minecart to give it a little push and uh, and it just get kind of stuck usually the other villagers in the minecart will it will just sort of bounce off them and be pushed along and then this power rail does most of the initial accelerations and yeah then you really only need to have a power rail eh, every 30 blocks or so so I'll put one right, uh, yeah, I'll put one right here. That should be good. And we'll put a lever there. Of course, we power it on with a lever. And then we'll just, uh, put a power rail right up here. You really don't need that many. I mean, if you're, you, if you're making, a uh, a minecart rail system to uh, get from point A to point B quickly, 
then you'd want to have power rails like every 16 blocks and you'd have to spend ages mining for gold but we don't really need that We're, we just need to get the villagers into these cells at in a reasonable amount of time so uh yeah and now before i uh send the villagers over i always like to uh test these uh minecart systems on myself first oh and one more thing you'll notice that this block is only one high and villagers are too high so you might be wondering how are they going to fit well number one rule with vehicles is that when you're in a vehicle in minecraft you become the vehicle so in your hitbox is no longer considered so if this were an opaque block like stone brick uh, the villager would actually take suffocation damage as they went through but it wouldn't slow down the minecart at all because the minecart fits fine so uh, yeah but because it's glass and glass is transparent um, you don't suffocate I mean it doesn't make sense that a transparent block doesn't suffocate you but I mean hey carbon monoxide is transparent but <laughs> That's Minecraft logic for you. Alright, I need to have at least 64 pieces of glass to uh, cover up all four spawning cells after I... Uh, folding cells after I finish them, so... I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm just going to test this on myself to make sure that it works. And one thing to that's important, uh, power rails will send a loaded minecart much farther than an empty one. Oh boy, I thought they fixed the glitchy sound of minecarts. Okay, good. Oh yeah, we, we're using way more than enough power rails. Wait. Oh yeah, fall damage, okay. Alright guys, this is it. When I open these gates, a bunch of villagers are gonna flood into here and fall down into this uh, canal and uh, be transported over to the Easy Loader 2000. Now I noticed that I put levers here, and I'm only going to use, I put uh, double fence gates just in case I needed them, but I really think I'm only going to need uh, a single wide fence gates. And I also put these levers here, and the reason for that is that if I were to just right click on the fence gates, so many villagers would be coming through that whenever I tried to right click on them to close them, I'd end up right clicking on a villager, and I'd end up sending way more villagers than I want to over to the Easy Loader 2000. So. That's why I use these levers. So, are you ready? And... Oops. Okay, that's a problem I didn't foresee. Um, some of the villagers apparently got pushed right up onto these blocks here. Which is not what I wanted. Get out of the way, you... Oh my god. See, this is why I... This is why you have to be really careful with when you have... Maybe if I stand right here and... Okay, so now I have a bunch of villagers uh, out and around here, which could be good. I mean, I'm there's a guy who wants to sell me a diamond hoe. Oh god, and you're in the way. Oh my god. So aggravating. There. There. Move, move it! Oh my god, get out of my... I hate dealing with villagers. Make one little mistake, like I should have just had blocks here, then this wouldn't have happened, but no. Get, get the, oh my god, get, get in. Oh, no, no, I need a police block, no, okay, oh, redstone. <sighs> okay, finally. You guys are in the way. Okay. Well, I still have a good number of villagers in the cell, and as much as I like to have these villagers to trade with, right now they're just so much in the way, I think what I'm going to do is keeping the cell sealed, I'll put some extra blocks here just to be extra safe, I think I'm just going to let some zombies in at night to uh, to deal with these villagers for me, uh, turn them all into zombies, maybe I'll uh, kill them for experience, or just let them despawn, I don't really care. I just need to get rid of all the villagers that are outside the cell, because I want to turn this thing back on so they can keep breeding, but I don't want to breed a whole bunch outside, so yeah, that's a problem. Hopefully uh, enough got in there for us to load the first couple spawning cells, because I would really like to get this iron golem farm going. Alright, so I will meet you over there. Alright guys, so 
We are uh, right here at the golem farm, and before we put the villagers in it and add the doors on, which will activate it, there is something that we need to do. Um, and that is uh, make a killing system for them. Because if we don't do that, then as soon as we put the doors in and uh, put all the villagers in, I'm going to have a whole bunch of golems, uh, ow, uh, spawning up there and uh, dropping down and uh, wandering around here. And I am not going to know what the hell to do with them all. And uh, yeah, if you think you're going to take your sword and just kill an iron golem to uh, collect its iron, uh, think again. I mean, maybe if you have like maximum enchantments on all your armor and it's at least iron or better, um, you'd have a chance. But look down at the uh, bottom left of your screen. See those 10 hearts there? Well, if you're an iron golem, you'd see 50. So yeah. Also, they have quite a good, uh, quite a large melee attack range. And uh, when they attack, it'll toss you in the air. So, what I'm doing right now is making a little killing system. And this is just going to be temporary. I'm eventually going to have them all funnel into a nice looking, uh, you know, killing chamber uh, that's going to be right in our house. And that's going to be sweet. But for now, I'm just going to do this because I haven't really decided where I want to collect them yet. Uh, my idea is basically that I'm going to have, like... A tool room slash armory. Uh, dang. Oops. Uh, slash armory sort of thing. Where, um, I have, uh, and I'd have the iron golem, uh, collection uh, chamber be right in the middle of it. I'd have the iron golem collection chamber be right in the middle of it. And I would have an enchantment table and I'd have chests where I keep, uh, used, uh, different tools and armor and tool and uh enchanted tools maybe some enchanted books uh once i get a good experience farm going that is i don't know that's that's just my idea but i haven't decided where i want such uh an armory slash uh, tool room to be so for now we're just going to have a collection chamber under each golem farm and I really need to stop saying, uh, I, it's, it's a terrible habit I have, and I am really sorry for those of you who find it irritating. Um, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, it's, it's, it's just hard to, uh, talk and, uh, play at the same time. So, iron golems, remember, are two blocks by two blocks wide. They're, they have the same footprint that a regular spider does, and they are, uh, three blocks tall. And to suffocate a mob, you have to, uh, you have to have its head stuck inside a an opaque block and suffocation it's really one of the best uh, most it's one of the best uh, forms of a uh, ways to kill a mob it's simple it's effective nothing's immune to it i mean nether mob mobs that you find in the nether are all immune to lava but they're not immune to being suffocated ghasts zombie pigmen blazes wither skeletons no matter how scary the mob unless it's like a boss well i mean i, I I don't know, can you, I think what, I, th I think you technically could suffocate, uh, something like an ender dragon or the wither, but both those mobs are so good at destroying blocks around them that you would be hard pressed to, actually no, I don't think you could suffocate the ender dragon, but yeah, so you just put a sticky piston here, remember we want it to be a sticky piston because we want it to be able to pull this, uh, block back when we're done, and then we just put a lever on it. And we're, of course, going to build a little fence around it as soon as I run back and get some fences. So when, you, when the golems are in here, they'll be in this 2x2 uh, two two square. We'll flip that switch, wait for like over a minute for them to suffocate because it'll take forever because they have a bunch of health. And then, when, then we just step right in here and collect the iron. So I will be right back. Have to build a fence around it, otherwise a creeper will release all of them. Okay, that's finished. So, uh, yeah. <sighs> Damn it, I said it again. So, yeah, when we want to kill the golems, we'll just flip that switch. Again, wait a while. And, of course, the, uh, this block is at the third, uh, block up because golems are three blocks tall. If this were for, uh, players or creepers or skeletons, this would be one by one and this would be at the second block. So, yeah. These I just built up just to make sure the golems uh, stay centered. I don't think golems tend to drift too much when falling, but 
Again, I just want to be uh, careful. I have actually been killed by iron golems uh, while I was trading with villagers, and I don't know what happened, but I accidentally hit one of them. And next thing I know, I was tossed in the air, and two iron golems kicked my ass. Alright guys, this is it. I did a final test of the rail just to make sure that they did, in fact, end up in the holding cell. We are now ready to send them. And when you put a minecart near a villager or push it into a villager, they'll get in it. So yeah, all you have to do is right click that track, and away they go. Enjoy your new home, Mr. Squidward! Now normally when I put villagers into an iron golem farm, I'm on a timer to do it quickly before they breed. But because I haven't put the doors in yet, there aren't any houses, so these Mr. Squidwards are not going to be breeding. So yeah, that's uh, I can take all the time I want. I know I'm going to get exactly four villagers in each cell, and that's, that's great. Now this is the part I always hate, because I do not want to hit uh, the villagers with the sword by mistake. Alright, let's see. What do I want to use to get out? I think I'm going to use ladders, just because... Alright, so I just do that. And the nice thing that, about this being made of snow is that when I use the pickaxe to pick up the rails, I'm not at risk of accidentally breaking a part of the structure, because pickaxes don't do well against snow. I mean, look at that. It doesn't, it doesn't mine it quickly at all. Alright, so we just put the snow on. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover the top with glass, just to make absolutely certain that there's no way any zombies could get in. The Minecraft wiki says that um, zombie, when a zombie siege occurs, uh, the zombies can spawn on blocks with, regardless of the light level. I've never seen that happen. I've never seen uh, zombies spawn on well-lit blocks for a zombie siege. Only, I've, I've seen them spawn, like, at, you know, near the village, you know, out where it's dark, but never on the, on a block that's, um, that's well lit. But the wiki says that, but, and, and it also says that uh, they cannot spawn on blocks that are, uh, that they wouldn't normally be able to spawn on, so blocks like glass, or or blocks that have water on them, or the right side up half slabs, or blocks that are considered transparent like TNT and glowstone, they can't spawn on those things, but yeah. You know what, I'm gonna... No, do I still have a power rail over there? Let me see... No, no, this distance, it should totally be able to go this distance, no problem. I mean, it's able to go... I'll do it just to be safe. I don't want a village, I don't want villagers getting stuck, because that's a pain in the butt, because when a villager is in a minecart that stopped, sometimes weird things happen, like sometimes they'll glitch out of it or appear to be out of it. I just don't even want... I've had that happen so many times and had to deal with all the headaches and had to chase villagers when I was up all the way on them. You know, like a thousand, not a thousand, but a hundred blocks up in the air. And I just don't want any part of that anymore. And this is something you have to watch out for. Occasionally there can be a tad, just a bit of lag as you're moving towards or away from a spawning cell. I think it's all the flowing water. But, yeah, it's caused me to fall off. And here we're over water, so it's not a big deal. But, you know, you could die. And So, let's do this one. So much easier than how I've done it before. And Squidwards, I promise you, there is no Spongebob in anywhere near this golem farm. So you will not have to put up with <laughs> or his foghorn alarm, or his bubbles. Although really, I think his bubbles are kind of cool, but you know. If you don't want it. And the reason I'm using my sword to break them is because the sword can, uh, uh, break a minecart in one hit. Alright, let's see now. And we grab our ladder. Probably shouldn't even have the shovel in my hotbar, just in case I accidentally 
broke the uh, snow. Yeah, when I built an iron golem farm, the first time I built it out of stone brick, which is a great material to build something like this out of, but one of the then I, I used a pickaxe to uh, break the uh, minecart because a pickaxe can also break a minecart in one hit, and I there are a couple times where I accidentally um, broke uh, a square that the villager was standing on. Usually they didn't fall out, but one time a villager did and it, it was just a huge pain in the butt. And the thing is they didn't even fall far enough to die so then I had to worry about there's a loose villager running around. What if he finds some structure I made with a wooden door, turns it into a house, and the structure is suddenly too close to is close enough to the iron golem farm to interfere with it. Because if there were another house outside this uh, golem farm that were uh, that was close was close enough to uh, be to join with the uh, village that is the iron golem farm, then it would mess it up completely because the center point would no longer be right there. Go you know who knows where the golems would spawn? It would just be a huge mess. All right. All right. Two down, two to go. Yeah. I should really make a tutorial video for that Easy Loader 2000 because this is just going really smoothly. I mean, sure, it took a it took a while to build, but look at it. That thing's not even ugly. Like. I'm not even going to have to tear that thing down after I'm done with this whole iron golem farm. I mean, in all of my past worlds, which is like uh, three, I'd have a big, ugly uh, wood structure up there that I'd end up having to tear down. And uh, that'd just be a pain in the butt. And usually I wouldn't end up tearing it down and my world would be ugly as hell. But that, that looks kind of cool. It looks kind of high tech. It looks industrial. I like it. You know, and it's kind of right, kind of close to the middle of uh, where all the iron golem farms are. So, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I especially like the way the glass uh, looks. It makes it look kind of like a modern skyscraper. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. Okay, guys. Here we are. Once these villagers are in, all I need to do is put up the doors and then we'll have iron. We'll be farming iron. That's right, because it used to be you couldn't farm iron. The only way you could get iron was to find it in the ground. So, if the world were limited in size, which, since we're not on the Xbox 360 edition, it really isn't, you'd have a limited amount of iron in the world. And even if the world was infinite, which it is, you'd still have to explore farther and farther and farther away from your home as you used up all the iron in the chunks that are close to it but with this farm we can we can get all the iron we want without ever exploring any new places at all and that is really cool you've probably figured out that uh, iron golem farms are like my favorite thing in the world to build and they are I, I think it's probably because when I first started playing minecraft I all I wanted was to make a minecart rail system I just thought that'd be really cool and whenever I tried to uh, make something get enough iron I'd end up dying and uh, and losing it all. In fact, I even found getting enough iron to make things like flint and steel and pickaxes to be uh, difficult, which is which is kind of sad. But yeah, I was just hopeless when it came to caving. So yeah, I mean, eventually got the hang of caving. But then I discovered the iron golem farm, and it was like, wow, okay, now it, now I don't have to be careful not to fall in lava. It just doesn't matter when I do, because well, I'll have all the iron in the world. so much fun working together they get the job done built to the bird 
Travis and Spud playing together like good friends should. All right, guys, so I just went off for a few minutes and uh, mined a little snow. It's only gone for a few minutes, but look e here. I'd say we have at least four or so golems, uh, and another one just came down. It's probably like five, six golems in there right now, just in the time that it took me to get this much snow. And you can, you can farm snow pretty quickly, so way less than an hour, I'd say. So, yeah. We're already seeing a uh, success from this uh, from this farm. All right, let's crush them. And because they are at full health, it is going to take a really long time for them to die. Nice. So in the space of like um, I'd say 20, 30 minutes, we just got 18 iron ingots from that. So. I say this project is a success. Alrighty, I think I'm going to end it on that note. And uh, next time, I will probably have built more of these spawning cells. And I'm probably going to do most of the putting the villagers in them off camera. Just because you guys have already seen how that works. And uh, yeah. See you guys next time. Peace.